At the end of our robotics discovery review, we concluded that the fixed programming held back the hardware more than vice versa. So we decided to see what we could make using custom code. We found BrickCC, an old app that allows us to program various LEGO smart bricks of the same era using not quite C or directly control the devices through a UI. The software communicates with the hardware using a Mindstorms infrared tower. We ran BrickCC on Windows 7 paired with an RIS 2.0 USB tower. As an aside, using custom code can actually enhance the hardware capability of the Scout. The Brick actually has the ability to control a micro Scout using a fat fiber optic cable, uh, like the ones that came with the Giga Mesh, though LEGO never exposed this feature properly. It does give the Scout an extra motor, I'll bet a bulky one, that needs its own batteries. Now, let's look at a simple extension, reprogramming one of the stock models, the HoopBot. Previously, this machine drove back and forth in a fixed pattern, and it could not dynamically return the ball, uh, leading to jams that we had to fix through hardware. On the flip side, changing only software, we could easily make the bot move in a random pattern and run the kicker only with a ball present. Uh, in this example, we even made the machine speed up as we scored more baskets. Interestingly enough, the Mindstorms remote can still control the scout while a routine is running. The program simply resumes after the intervening commands end. We also noticed a construction oddity we missed before. The bot has four 1x2 bricks under the chassis that have no purpose other than to support the model during construction. Next up, something more involved. We tried to implement a classic STEM concept a line-following robot. For the hardware, we built a simple skid steer chassis where the scout's light sensor faced downward close to the ground. For the software side, we might have been able to use the stock programming to achieve line avoiding, but we definitely needed NQC code to achieve line following. We had to calibrate the light sensor on every run by indicating what to consider light or dark using a touch sensor. We could not configure this beforehand because the Scout has no good output mechanism and it can't tell us what it considers light or dark. With the proper calibration, the robot should turn one way on dark, turn the other way on light, and go straight for anything in between. Again, on the hardware side, we found that the freestyle tires have basically no grip on the hubs, and we quickly changed to the larger wheels. The poor performance of the original wheels might have some correlation to their use on the bug bot. This robot strongly felt the impact of cutting power to a motor, coasting, versus actively stopping a motor, braking. Turning by braking results in a very jerky movement, whereas turning by coasting results in a much smoother path. Finally, we also tried to build a better plotter rover than the one found in the control center. We theorized that we could make encoders using touch sensors and that a measured distance-based programming would give better drawing accuracy than a blind time-based recording. 
making these encoders proved very tricky. Through trial and error, we had to implement a mechanism that would reliably trigger the touch sensors, and even then, we discovered that it could still miss clicks if we ran it faster than slow. We also wanted to limit ourselves to using just the parts in this set, and that probably became our limiting factor. Our final chassis design ran the encoders at 1 to 5 and the wheels at 1 to 25. The set simply did not have enough pieces to add more reduction. Two clicks per revolution on the encoders gave us 10 clicks per revolution at the wheels, or 36 degrees of resolution. Not nearly enough in the end. Even with the wheels spaced very far apart, the bot could only realistically turn to an accuracy of about 10 degrees, and that could not even draw a square square. Furthermore, the encoders could still, even if very rarely, miss a click, and we could not recover from such an error because the software could not know that it happened. If we had the parts, adding more reduction might have fixed the problem, but we probably would have had to gear it down a lot more and the bot already ran extremely slowly. At least our gravity pen holder worked far better than the one on the command center rover. Just for reference, we also tried running a blind time-based program, and ironically, it worked very well. We could not only draw square squares, we could draw them accurately repeatedly. We could even draw the Nonsense Wars logo better, I'll bet bigger, than the Command Center plotter. I'm not entirely sure this worked well because we had good motors or because we had so much reduction, but I lean toward the latter because we used rebuilt 43362 motors most of the time. In the end, or perhaps in conclusion, uh, proper encoders would probably help a lot, and we hope to try building and evaluating similar machines with more modern or capable LEGO electronics. I guess comment if you want to see more, or if you want to see something specific, but on that note, this is the end of the video, and have a nice day. Oh wait, you can turn the brick off from here. You wanna watch oh, yeah, that? Yeah, okay, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so that's there. Okay, so turn. <laughs> okay, well, there's nothing to see there, but it, okay. it, no, it turned off. Yeah, I know it turned off. It turned off. Yeah, okay.